Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 1st of November. PM Modi says won't compromise even an inch of land on India's borders. Pakistan terms Chinese ambassador remarks on security issue as surprising. And Trump condemns attacks on minorities in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said India cannot compromise even an inch of land on its borders as he celebrated Diwali with armed personnel at Sir Creek near the Indo Park border. PM Modi said government policies are aligned with the resolve of the armed forces and added that the government will not compromise even an inch of land of the country. The government believes in the strength of the armed forces to defend the country and does not depend on the words of the country's enemies, he further said. The comments made by the Indian Prime Minister coincide with the disengagement process between the Indian and Chinese forces at the northern frontier, ending a four-year-long standoff between the two neighbours. Both countries had reached an agreement to disengage and start coordinated patrols as their perception of the line of actual control. As per defence officials, India on Friday began patrolling in the Demchok sector, while the patrolling in the Depsang sector is expected to start soon. And the Indian capital has once again topped the Global Pollution Index a day after Diwali celebrations, which saw flouting of firecracker ban. Meanwhile, Lahore in Pakistan, which stood second in pollution rankings, also grappled with severe smog. A report. New Delhi plummeted into a thick haze of toxic air on Friday as the city topped global pollution rankings a day after Diwali revelers flouted firecracker bans and sent air quality plummeting. Thick smog reached the Indian capital, shrouding the India Gate and the Presidential Palace in the Central District and the surrounding gardens popular with joggers and cyclists after Thursday's celebrations. The air quality index stood over 340 in the morning, said Swiss firm IQ Air, taking pollution into the hazardous category, pushing Delhi to the top of a real-time list as the world's most polluted city. Pollution is very difficult today. और आज पोल्यूशन तो बहुत ज़्यादा है कल से तो पटाके वगैरह वगैरह इतने सारे पटाके फोड़े कल तो सो भी नहीं पाए हम Meanwhile, pollution led smog is causing serious problems for workers, especially those who work outdoors in Pakistan's Lahore, which stands second in the global pollution rankings. Construction worker Nasir Khan said his family is facing constant uncertainty with his income due to the lack of work now available. Some days he earns enough, while on others there is no work at all, making it difficult to provide for his family. अब ये स्मोक की वजह से काफी ठेकेदारों ने मालकों ने काम भी बंद किया हुआ है कि घरों से बारह-बार एक-एक बजे तक निकलते नहीं है उन्होंने अपने काम बंद कर दिए दूसरे स्मोक की वजह से जो है ना हम हमें भी थोड़ी सी जो है ना तकलीफ होती है मतलब के कांसी हो गया जुकाम बुखार ये स्मोक की वजह से आंखों की जलन then smoke swarmed pakistan's lahore with aqi of 151 to 200 on friday a marked improvement from when it topped the global pollution charts earlier on Monday with an AQI of 507. Moving on, Pakistan's Foreign Office on Thursday called the recent remarks by Chinese ambassador to Pakistan as surprising and not reflective of the diplomatic traditions. The Chinese envoy to Islamabad, Jiang Zaidong, on Wednesday urged Pakistan government to launch a crackdown against anti-China militant troops as he highlighted the two deadly attacks against Chinese nationals in the country within six months, local media reported. Ambassador Jiang 
emphasized that these attacks were unacceptable and stressed the need for enhanced security measures. Reacting to these remarks at the weekly media briefing, Pakistan's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mumtaz Zara Baloch said the comments from the Chinese ambassador were surprising and inconsistent with Islamabad and Beijing's diplomatic tradition. She further said Chinese citizens in Pakistan are important guests and reassured that Pakistan is committed to safeguarding Chinese citizens, companies and projects within its borders. She added Pakistan has also kept China informed on investigations into the previous attacks on Chinese nationals. Moving on, UNICEF chief Catherine Russell has raised concern that the voices of Afghan women are being silenced and their dreams denied. In a message shared on Wednesday on X, Russell stated, those excluded from schools are confined to their homes and stripped of their rights with little future beyond early marriage. She emphasized that no country can progress without the participation of half its population and called on the global community to intervene. The ban on girls' education above sixth grade has severely limited Afghan women's job and economic opportunities, negatively impacting their lives by suppressing their aspirations and potential. According to a recent UN survey, early marriages have increased due to the education ban, leaving Afghan girls with few life options and increasing vulnerability under the Taliban rule. Moving on, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump in a Diwali message on X has condemned the atrocities faced by minority Hindus in Bangladesh. Trump slammed the Biden administration, including Democratic candidate and Vice President Kamala Harris, and said they have ignored Hindus across the world. He added that this would have never happened under his watch. The U.S.-Bangladesh ties were strained during the Sheikh Hasina regime. But after her ouster, Washington has extended its support to the interim government led by Hasina's arch foe, Muhammad Yunus. The U.S. has, however, largely remained silent on attacks on minorities in Bangladesh. Meanwhile, the Bangladesh United Minority Alliance held a torch procession in Dhaka on Thursday, demanding better treatment of minorities. This came after 19 individuals from the Hindu community, including ISKCON Divisional Secretary, Shinmoy Krishna Das Brahmachari were charged with sedition for allegedly disrespecting Bangladesh national flag in Chittagong. The protest come a day after UN called for minority protection in the country. Meanwhile, violence swept through the Jatiya Party central office in Dhaka late on Thursday as a raging mob clashed with party members and set the building ablaze. Writers were seen destroying furniture and vandalizing posters of party chairman Gulam Mohammad Qadir, while others set fires within the building. The Jatiya Party, founded by former President Hussain Mohammad Irshad in 1986, has been a significant player in Bangladesh politics. The party has since undergone various transformations over the years, including a brief alliance with ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's Awami League in 2019. No one had claimed responsibility for Thursday night's attack on Jatiya Party's office till the last reports came in. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.